All right, hello and welcome to the Insights into Leadership and Teams webinar for our Minnesota Technology Association members. My name is Jay Denson and I'm the Director of Community Engagement for our newly renamed and rebranded Minnesota Technology Association. So as some of you may know, our organization went through a little facelift recently. Um, for, so for those of you who don't know what we do, I'm gonna briefly, very quickly share a little bit about that. Uh, before introducing Scott, who will be leading you through the webinar today. So our organization is designed to help fuel the tech ecosystem here in Minnesota, and we do that by focusing on three key pillars. The first being driving policy and advocacy for our tech ecosystem. The second being focusing on building out a stronger tech workforce here in Minnesota. And the third, my personal favorite, being bringing people together to learn, connect, and collaborate. So building community essentially for our tech ecosystem. So today we're excited to have Scott host an awesome webinar about leadership styles and interpersonal communication. Just to share, share some context a little bit, Scott is a staple for our Minnesota Technology Association. Um, so we have a leadership development program called the ACE Leadership Program that brings emerging technologies leaders together to focus on, focus on building out their leadership toolkit. Um, and every year, Scott and his company does a Discovery Insights session. So in this particular session, um, they learn a lot about different leadership styles, their own styles, and they get to bond as a cohort. And this is typically their favorite part of the program um, because he breaks down various leadership styles and how to effectively work across those styles. So it's awesome that he's bringing this session to you all and sharing a little bit of the magic that our ACE leaders get to experience experience um, with the broader tech community. So without further ado, let's welcome Scott. Take it away. Awesome. Thanks, Jay. Welcome, everyone. I want to do just a quick tech setup and make sure we're all good here to go uh, working with Zoom. Um, make sure that your chat's working. I want to have us jump into there, um, throw out some of the things here that we're working on. I think Piper was maybe going to switch on your uh, potential for video. If that's your preference, join us via video. That's fine as well. But I would like to have just a quick intro in the Zoom chat. There you go. I'm good. Thanks, Carol. Um, just make sure it's working for you. In a group this size, uh, what we like to do is just make sure that we're able to utilize that chat. It also helps represent the personalities that are online. And that's what this is all about. Who are you? How, what makes you tick? How are you wired? How are you showing up in this new remote work environment? And what is your preference about how to interact with all the other coworkers and colleagues that you have? So that's why we do it. Again, my name is Scott Schwefel. I used to be a member of um, MTA. I don't know how, if there's anyone old enough on this call to remember Benchmark Computer Learning, uh, but I owned and ran Benchmark for 12 years. So Minnesota's largest computer network uh, training company uh, was my involvement and my connection back to MTA. So through that, I was able to work with most of the IT folks, IT departments, uh, IT organizations, around town for many years. It's where I learned about Insights Discovery. It's where I learned about this powerful tool for making connections and interacting with each other. So what I wanna do is create the context for you about why we're going through it and also confirm that you all have your Insights Discovery profile. If you took it online, if you went to the link and answered the questions, it should have been emailed back to you. If you took the profile, answered the questions and didn't um, receive it back, please check your spam folder just to make sure it didn't go in there. Um, in the chat, just let me know that you have it, if you could. Just, you know, yes, you've got your profile is what I'm looking for right now. Because what I know tends to come with that is you've all had a chance to look at it. A lot of times you've already begun to share it with others, which is the power of it. Our goal would be that you literally share it with everyone you interact with, both professionally as well as personally. That would be our goal, professionally as well as personally. My wife is my business partner, by the way, and she and I have taken hundreds and hundreds of couples through this exact same program. In fact, we hosted a happy hour uh, last Thursday night and had almost, what, 60 couples that were on here with the profile sharing information back and forth with each other. It's all about understanding self and understanding other people to make better connections. That's why we do it. We've worked, I've worked with all these organizations as this is uh, the 20th year that I've been involved with Insights Discovery. And I don't work for Insights, by the way. Insights is the company who owns the profile that you have. They're headquartered in Dundee, Scotland. I own a local company here in uh, Excelsior, Minnesota. 
and uh, have done so for 18 years now. It's called Discover Yourself. So the website for our business, how to reach out to us is discoveryourself.com. Uh, there's also a book that I wrote, in fact, by the same name. Uh, and and uh, just yesterday, I think I posted a link to download it for free if you have an interest, if you want to learn more. Um, it's all about making sure that you're doing the right work. And in, in a time of sort of remote reflection, uh, probably one of the best times to think about doing it. As you can see, uh, there are some high-tech organizations, technology companies that we work with, as well as IT departments within many of these organizations as well. Companies like Microsoft, by the way, have put 60 thousand people through this program. LinkedIn puts 100% of their employees through Insights Discovery. So whether it's a focus on team building, leadership development, or just um, remote workers learning how to communicate better, that's why we do it. So here's how we kick it off. We kick it off by thinking about how we see ourselves showing up. So what I'm going to ask you to do, if I were to ask the question, who are you, and, and, and ask that you answer it with an adjective. Come up with an adjective that describes you right now and just pour it into the chat for us. Any adjective, good or bad, just whatever pops up, just drop it into the chat. Let's see where we're all coming from this morning. Let's see what we're all dealing with and how we're all feeling and what we're all thinking. I'm watching them shoot by, curious, tired, unique, flexible. If your chat's pulled up, I believe you can see this also. Analytical, analytical observant, contemplative. If I were to go back and pull down this list, what you would find out is that, and this is not always the case, but very often the case, the first half of the list is more extroverted descriptors. The second half of the list tends to be more introverted descriptors. And what's behind that is the amount of time that introverts versus extroverts like to take in making a decision. And again, there's an exception for everything I, I, I share with you today. And you may be that exception in some cases, but in general, I'm gonna share with you generally how people are wired, how people show up, and then give you the tools to let everyone else know how to show up. Daria, if you're uh, able to go down to the green bar and pull up your chat, you should be able to see it. So here's what's important about what you just selected. You chose it consciously. Carl Jung talked about conscious persona. It's who we are when we're thinking about who we are. And in the moment I asked the question, who are you? You begin to think about who you are and you respond out of what brain scientists call your conscious brain. It's the part of you that is thinking about how you're showing up. What's interesting about that concept is it suggests that there is also a less conscious brain, not subconscious and not unconscious but less conscious. It means the way you show up when you're not actively thinking about who you are. Let me give you another way to illustrate it. The tiger is conscious persona. It's who we believe we are, it's how we think we show up, it's how we believe other people will experience us. And we move to that idea, paint that tiger, create that notion of conscious persona, typically every morning on a work day. We just simply wake up, look in the mirror, and think about who am I gonna be today? How am I gonna show up today? How are others going to experience me today? Now here's an interesting concept. Brain scientists estimate that we act like our conscious persona, meaning operating out of that mindset, 5% a day. 5% of the day, we're the tiger we think we are. 95% of the day, we show up like the image of the kitten in the mirror. Isn't that interesting? To most other people we interact with, we're not the people that we believe we are. So what I want you to get ready for is discovery, the profile you have, it's gonna paint a picture of both of these sides of who you are, the one you told us, the one you captured, the one you believe to be true for most people, and then the other side of who you are, the way you show up when you're unaware of your behavior. An example I like to give people to help make this concept very concrete is your blinking. Now, until I just mentioned your blinking, you were all blinking. It was natural, it was comfortable, it was easy, and it was probably automatic. Didn't have to think about it at all. But the more I talk about your blinking, the more you think about your blinking. And as you think about it, it changes. Not only does it change, the pattern changes. You don't know what the pattern was like before I brought it up. That illustrates another key concept of conscious and less conscious persona. 
You don't know yourself as the kitten in the mirror. You have to learn about that side of who you are through the lens of other people by talking to them and asking them how they perceive you to be showing up compared to how you told us in answering the questions you believe you show up. But again, only 5% of the time are we the tiger that we think we are. And by the way, the way to also experience this movement from unaware of your blinking to suddenly aware, recognize that by being aware, you can change it. Because I'm operating with conscious awareness, I can blink as much as I want, I can stare as much as I want, I can do anything I want with that function. What's interesting is when you learn your personality is the exact same. You are the person you think you are and can make changes to the way you show up if you're consciously aware. If you're unaware of your behavior, you likely show up the same to everybody. So how do we make this easy to understand for everyone? And again, I say we, it's the guys in Scotland that dreamt up this model, uh, basically a modern day MBTI. Um, a much more usable and well-informed and different interpretation of Jung's work, personality style model. So we break it into color energies and it's the way in which we leverage it. Take a look at my list and, and stay on this theme of thinking about who are you? And to Sasha, your question, for some people that's true, but it is extremely rare, extremely rare. And by that, I mean, of the 50 some thousand people I've worked with in the last 20 years, I've only come across two profiles, only literally two people whose profiles were the same. So um, take a look at the words. And again, with this idea, with this notion of self, I want you to pick three words that describe you well. And on one line, type those three words into the chat all together. So wait till you have your three and then type all three words into the chat that describe you well. Interesting, Sasha. I'll be curious if we peek at your graphs. And they might be very, very similar, by the way, but if the graphs are the exact same, the graph in the middle shows nothing. For everyone then, when you have your three words, go ahead and put them down. Purposeful, determined, factual. By the way, what you realize with this one slide, uh, it's basically a personality assessment by itself. We have a version of this, a one pager, uh, that we'd be happy to share with you at the end here. I'll give you all my contact information and a way to reach out to us, but it's fun to use in uh, personal relationships. Print it, take a few copies home, spouse, partner, children, children above 12, 13, 14 can engage in the same exercise. What I want you to do now, most of you appear to have selected your three words. I wanna translate those words to the language of color. And I want you to begin to look at and recognize the pattern in which you prefer to demonstrate the insights, discovery, color energies. An important point here is you didn't become one of the four colors. Nobody's a red guy, nobody's a blue girl. We use the color energies with consciousness to create better interactions with other people. But when we are unaware of our behavior, we likely exhibit the same pattern. And by the way, as you, as you move into thinking about the patterns, take a look at the other words that match the colors of the words you picked. There's likely some synergy there. Meaning if two of your three words were yellow and we call it yellow energy, you might notice that many of the other yellow words are good descriptors for you. Same with blue, same with red, same with green. Another interesting exercise is consider which words on here are really not you. Is there one or two words, and again, color energies is what we're really leaning into. You don't have to type these into the chat, but just think about which ones are not you. Which ones don't describe you well? Which ones would you not expect other people to use in describing you? Because what you're beginning to build out is this idea of which color energy you tend to lead with. You might lead with a lot of cool blue words, followed by green if that's next, followed by maybe red, and then maybe yellows on the bottom. And what we do is we use a lot of colorful tools to help people think about and engage around the color energies because there's the way you think you show up, 
And then there's maybe the way you show up when you're unaware of your behavior, your discovery profile is gonna show you both, which is part of what makes it so interesting. And again, if you have a question at any time, type it into the chat. I've got a pretty good uh, view of the chat right here. I want you to think about what's the order in which you demonstrate these colors. And I'll give you one more, one more aspect of it before I ask you to take a stab at it. Think about which of these color energies you demonstrate the most. Not what color are you, again, not what color are you, but what color energy do you prefer to demonstrate? If it's fiery red, you're competitive, demanding, determined, strong-willed, and purposeful. Go, 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 get stuff done. The opposite of that fiery red, get it done energy is earth green. Calm, caring, relaxed, patient, supportive, collaborative, all about bringing people together, all about consensus, all about support for each other. You start to see where there's an opposite dynamic of personality styles. Fiery red is do it now. Earth green is do it harmoniously. Is everybody okay? Is everybody ready to go? Now, some of you, and we know that roughly 9% of our profiles are people who lead with two opposite color energies. Your highest could be fiery red. Your second highest could easily be earth green. Carl Jung called those creative types where one moment you're demonstrating red energy and with a little bit of a shift, a moment later, you're demonstrating earth green. We'll talk more about that in a little bit, but if, if you believe those are your top two, or let's say blue and yellow are your top two, you may very well fall into what Carl Jung called creative types. The other pair of opposites, like I just showed you, are sociable, dynamic, demonstrative, enthusiastic, sunshine, yellow. You're all about people, all about energy, and all about emotion. And you are the opposite personality type of cool blue. Analytical, cautious, precise, deliberate, questioning, formal. If you lead with cool blue, you bring a natural and valuable skepticism to events like this. Your mindset is all about, prove it to me. Show me the proof. Show me the proof. Again, at the end, we'll, we'll make the offer to reach out if you want more information on the statistical validity and reliability of the model. And if you lead with high cool blue energy, you need that to know that what we're talking about is real. Looks like some of you have already jumped ahead of me and begun to put all your color energies into the chat. That's fantastic. If you haven't, I want you to go ahead and do it, paying special attention to the one that you listed first. Not because, again, not because you become that color energy, but because the one you listed first is likely the one you know yourself to be showing with consciousness. And the reason I ask you to pay attention to that is the next slide. So let me give the rest of you a chance to, to jump in. See if you can at least get your top two, because while I would not tell you that I'm a yellow guy, it's okay for me to suggest that I lead with yellow red or I'm yellow red, or I prefer yellow red. Those are my top two energies. You can see in the graphic, whoops, <laughs> mirrored image. You can see behind me. Those are my blocks. Yellow, red, green, blue is the order in which I demonstrate the colors. Why is it important to focus on the one that you lead with? Because of the next slide. I wanna show you what you might look like to other colleagues and personal relationships when you are unaware that you are overusing the gift of your color energy. We literally call it bad day. Bad day red, bad day green, bad day blue, or bad day yellow. It's when you're bringing too much of your natural self to someone else who doesn't appreciate your unique style. And now here's the thing. If we're only consciously aware 5% of the time, then we only have 5% awareness to pay attention to the other person to decide if we're leaning into their color energies in the right way. It suggests that 95% of the time we're interacting with other people not aware of how we're showing up to them. Thank you. Just got a delivery. Um, and so the other thing about this is it's not just when you're having a bad day that you may show up overusing or, or overextending your insights color energies, but it's also possibly and likely when you're interacting with your opposite type. That means if you lead with natural fiery red and you perceive yourself to be competitive, demanding, and strong-willed, all very good descriptors, but you're interacting with a colleague who leads with earth green, they tend to see you on bad day. They see you aggressive, controlling, driving, overbearing, and intolerant. If you lead 
with earth green energy and you're interacting with someone who leads with fiery red. They likely see you docile, bland, plotting, reliant, and stubborn, bad green energy. If you're not paying attention, you don't realize you're doing everything wrong in your interaction with other people. Some of the tools that we use to help people understand the model are the blocks that you stack and put on your desk, which even have little descriptors. For earth green, show me you care. For fiery red, be brief, be bright, be gone. Cool blue, you want the details. And sunshine yellow says, involve me, love to be involved. In this remote work environment, we have electronic copies of these blocks. You can cut and paste them right into your email signatures and everybody who gets an email from you can see how you wanna be treated. Also, you can just take to drink it out of the coffee mugs that let people know where you're coming from. Let's have some fun, engage with me, or my focus is getting stuff done. Not about the chit chat, about getting things done. If you have the tools, stack the blocks. If you don't, as a follow on again, we'll get you the electronic versions of them. But what we want you to realize is the way that you see the world is a function of the order of your color energies. Think of it this way. If I'm seven feet tall, everybody is short. That's my frame of reference. That's my world. My filter is seven feet tall. So even if you're six two, you're short to me. If your work style is go, 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 get stuff done, nobody around you moves fast enough. If you lead with high yellow energy, nobody's fun enough. Nobody engages enough with you in a way that you like. If you lead with earth green, nobody cares. Nobody cares enough. Nobody cares and takes the time to make those personal one-to-one -one connections like you would want. And if you lead with cool blue, you've got to redo everybody's work. It's never quite right. So step one in our model is all about who are you? Because it's the filter through which you make sense of the world. Quick question, conscious versus less conscious. Conscious is aware of how you're showing up. Less conscious is how you actually show up 95% of the time. You might've missed Ted, my example was blinking. You've all been blinking. You're all not thinking about it. It's really easy to do. It's really automatic and natural. But the moment you think about it, it changes. When we move to conscious awareness of ourselves, our personality changes also. But what's more important than just the fact that it subtly changes or even radically changes is why don't we learn how to change it so that we can be more like the people we're communicating with? Why don't we speed up and punch it for fiery red? Why don't we slow down and make a connection for Earth Green? Why don't we bring some energy and a big smile for those people who lead with yellow? And for cool blue, let's take emotion off the table and let's support what we're suggesting with data, facts, and logic. In each one of those demonstrations of a color energy, I was simply choosing to be aware and modifying my style as a result. That's the power of this model. Also, the fact that it's color-based allows your brain to connect to it quickly and easily and sort people quickly and easily hundreds of times every single day, even working alone in a remote workplace. And by the way, if that's the case for you, you've also got a new coworker potentially, and maybe even several shorter ones that you didn't expect. You can use discovery to better connect and adapt with spouse, with partner, and with children because you're gonna realize at the end of this call, it's not that difficult to identify color energies in other people. Again, questions, jump them into the chat. What I'll share with you is where this all came from. Why does this work? Well, in 1921, Carl Jung wrote Psychological Types. Chapter 10 in this well-worn book, my copy is from 1979. In chapter 10, he identified these two, uh, pairs of, uh, or the, this first pair of attitudes, as he called them, introversion and extroversion, and also the four functions, sensing, intuition, thinking, and feeling. If you're familiar with Myers-Briggs or MBTI, they have, they have another category on their assessment called judging and perceiving. Carl Jung does not have a category of judging and perceiving. He used those words, but he used them to describe what you're looking at right now. He called sensing and intuition perceiving functions. And he called thinking and feeling judging functions because you're making a decision. The way he laid this out in short is you're either an introvert or an extrovert. You're all about what's outside of you or you go internal. You gather information 
through senses, your five senses, you see it, you hear it, you touch it, it's tangible, it's real, you can prove it to other people, it's practical and it's in the moment. Or you gather information through your intuition. You just know stuff, you don't know why, you know it. Sometimes people call intuition a gut feel, but it's not a feeling. The feeling is a result of knowing something first. Intuition can't be proven to other people. Intuition means you live in a world of potential, a world of possibilities. You're all about what could be because you're bringing new things into awareness that can't be proven some other way. Thomas Edison probably led with high sensation. He just kept putting stuff together till it worked in new ways. Albert Einstein likely led with intuition. The theory of relativity could not be proven in the moment. It couldn't be proven for 50 years. But now that we can, we realize it came to him in some other way. However you gathered information, sensing versus intuition, you have to make a decision and you do it based on data, facts, and logic, meaning you're a thinker, or people, feelings, and relationships, meaning you're a feeler. Again, Myers-Briggs added another category. What Insights Discovery did to help make it usable is to say, let's just take introversion, extroversion, and for now, just thinking and feeling. In doing so, they labeled red and yellow energy as extroversion, and blue and green are introversion. I'll let you read the words yourself. Helena, what's very interesting about your comment, and many people um, think that, many people notice that about themselves. I've had over 150 people so convinced that they were different at home that I've said, take the, take the assessment again. Refill out the profile as if you're at home. Answer all the questions as if you're at home. And here's the thing, out of 72 possible outcomes, 72 what we call wheel positions, every single retake was the same. I'll say more about that later when we're looking at the profiles. But what happens is most of us with consciousness see ourselves a certain way. But when we end the workday, we disengage from work. Uh, we, we let out a breath. We relax. We drive home. And we say, time to be that person I think I am at home. But we don't think about who we are at home. We just show up as our less conscious self. And then the next morning, if it's a work day, we jump right back to consciousness. The days that we really do this, two very important days to start to notice, if you work Monday through Friday, Friday at 5.30 this week, I want you to notice how you feel when you disengage from work. It's the big exhale. It's the, oh, time to let it go. I'm going to be myself all weekend. And then we don't typically think about how we're showing up much to other people until what time on Sunday? What time do we get the Sunday scaries? Three, four, five o'clock? There's a moment we think about the fact that Monday's coming and boom, we move to consciousness in that moment. Uh, Sasha, that is, a, that is one corollary to it. Getting energy from people or getting energy from being alone for most introversion and extroversion is that way. When extroverts want to recharge, they go be with other people. When most introverts want to recharge, they need to be alone. Helena, what I would have you do is just reach out to us afterwards because that link is turned off um, because we're currently doing the webinar now. What happens is the, the link gets overshared inside organizations. So once we run the live event, we, we switch the link off. It may look like people can still use it, but we can't process those profiles anymore. So I'll just have you reach out to me afterwards. So red and yellow, extroverted energies, you're the talkers. Blue and green, introverted energies, you're more reflective and tend to be better listeners. Thinking-based decision makers tend to lead with blue or red energy, the top of the model. You're all about the data, all about the facts, and all about the logic. It also shows up in your language. Thinkers say, I think, what do you think? How do you think things are going? Down on the bottom, feelers say, how do you feel the numbers will come out this month? What do you feel like for lunch? Feelers say, I feel, and thinkers say, I think. Another way to identify people in the model is feelers tend to show emotion. Thinkers tend not to show emotion. So if you bring these together, you're seeing why we define the color energies the way we do. Cool blue is a combination of introversion and thinking coupled together. If you lead with cool blue, you're Carl Jung's introverted thinker. By the way, here's the man himself. Happened to see him on the shelf when I grabbed the book. This is a uh, Maybe not such a great version of Carl Jung, but 
we're aligning his psychology to help you understand why earth green means what we say it means because it's introversion and feeling coupled together it's somebody that goes internal but goes to the heart where cool blue is someone who goes internal but goes to the head for sunshine yellow it's extroversion coupled with feeling it's the heart again but it's all about what's outside of you think about someone that you know all of you who talks all the time they lead with yellow energy okay if you can't think of anyone who talks all the time around you then you probably lead with yellow energy that's how the model works fiery red is Jung's extroversion and thinking coupled together. It's why we say fiery red, sunshine yellow, earth green, and cool blue. And here's the power of the colors connecting to your brain. You'll never forget what they mean. Many of you, most people, go through Myers-Briggs and within a matter of weeks or months, forget their letters, forget all the other letters of all the other people, and it's really difficult to figure out. If you can answer just two questions, you can figure people out. Are they introverted or extroverted? Are they a thinker? or a feeler. Then you plug them into the model. Again, put your questions into the chat. I'll address them if I can. And now I want you to get into your discovery profile. I'm guessing you don't have it printed. If you do, that's great. It's easier to access. If you do have it online, I highly encourage you to print it so that you've got it there for quick reference. You will be able to achieve so much more value if you can look at it, see it, and reference it. But also, because you also have it electronically, Forward it to any colleague you have. Forward it to any colleague, coworker, friend, manager, or direct report, or even customer that you want to help them understand how to communicate with you better, because that's what's in the profile. I'm guessing you all had a chance to read through the overview section, the very first part. And if you did, what I'd like you to offer up into the chat is what was your first reaction? When you read it for the first time, what was your reaction? It might even be just one word, but type that into the chat for me. Spot on, spot on, spite on, right on. Aha, exclamation point. Oh God, that's funny. Startingly accurate, accurate, accurate. 75% right. That's not so right to me. That's like a C minus. Uh, but I'll speak to that in just a moment. I love that. Skeptical. And again, if you're bringing that healthy, cool blue energy, that's one of the gifts that cool blue brings. A lot of times facilitators in a room will say to a group of people, okay, let's brainstorm some new ideas. There's no bad ideas. And people who lead with cool blue immediately say to themselves, oh my gosh, these are almost all going to be bad ideas. There are bad ideas. How could you say that? It's not even true. What you learn to do is interact with color energies based on where they're coming from. I would say, hey, everybody, let's use whatever yellow energy you have to brainstorm. Then let's come back and all use our cool blue energy to pick all those ideas apart. It's the way we arrive at the best possible answer, which is always a combination of both blue and yellow energy. Let's think about it using earth green energy to make sure it's good for people, good, good for our customers, good for our employees. And then let's use our fiery red to move it to action. You start to realize you can use the four color energies to make better decisions, to come up with better ideas, better action plans. But its primary purpose is connecting and adapting with other people. By the way, the profile you have is unique, one in 100 billion. That's how many different combinations can be produced, 100 billion. The profile that you're holding, ideally that you're able to print and hang on to, is unique to you in the entire world. What we ask you to do, not in this call, but if we were an intact team looking to work better together, we'd have you share a statement that really describes you well out of the overview. And to one of the questions on there, I think it was the one that said skeptical, um, we, we do invite you to underline any statement that you disagree with. And, and of course, calculate how many are there. There's roughly 50 sentences. So if you identified five of them were not you, right? Literally, it'd be 90% accurate. Um, in doing so, though, we ask that you go to people who know you well and read those statements to the people who know you well. If everyone agrees with you, we're going to have you cross it off. But some of you are going to find out that you do the things that you underline. You do the things that you don't believe you do because you do them operating out of your less conscious. 
quick example. I was with a woman, uh, I bet it was 15 years ago, and she picked it up right in the middle of reading it. And she said, look, it says I do this and I don't. It says this is me. It's not me. And it says I'm nitpicky and I am not nitpicky. And she looked at me and went, oh my God, I'm nitpicky. Oh my God, I'm all these things. And I said, I don't know you. I don't, I've just met her, but she's got to go back to the people who know her well and look for that feedback. Again, if you were an intact team like I have this afternoon, we'd have you share all these things in the chat. We capture that, we send it back out to your teams. It's really, really powerful. What's even more powerful is this next exercise, again, for intact teams. If any of you on the call work in the same organization, I highly encourage you to, to share these via email with each other or to create a document that everyone can provide input to that you share back. Type in your top value to the team and let your colleagues know what it is. But then these two, we call them your do's and your don'ts. I also call them the marriage saver pages. Type into the chat, again, you don't need to do it now, but email your coworkers and say, when communicating with me, please try to do this and give them that one statement. But then also say, I'd really appreciate when you're communicating with me, if you would try not to do this and give them that statement. We have a lot of fun in our face-to-face -face workshops when we do this, and even online as teams capture this, because sometimes we'll have the groups just literally share it with each other, but we always have you type it in, we always capture it so that we can share it back with an intact team. Let's go to the last page in your profile so I can help you understand what the graphs mean, where the graphs came from, and in fact, as a result, where did your entire profile come from? Daria, if I was your coworker, I'd want to know that about you. All right, I'd want to know that about you. So if you're on your last page, you see graphs. There's three of them. This is, I believe, one of the most important pages in the profile because it's where you see your tiger and it's where you see your kitten. We asked you not 25 questions, but literally just one question 25 times in a row. And the question was, how much blue, red, green, and yellow energy do you have? So this is one of the questions. When you said that you have most buoyant and light-hearted, what you really said is that you lead with yellow energy. When you put a five for determined and dominant, as you can see, least and most is simply zero to six. We gave it red energy, exact and precise, right in the middle, cool blue, and calm and even tempered. If you look close, you see a zero down on the bottom. We took your answers, over all 25 questions and average them out to give you the graph on the left. The graph on the left is your conscious persona. The graph on the left is your tiger. The graph on the left represents how you would stack the blocks or which order of blocks you would put in your email signature. In this case, leads with yellow, followed by green, then red, then blue. This would be in the bottom of every email you send to every coworker reminding them how you want to be treated. However, that's only you 5% of the time. It's only you when you're thinking about how you're showing up, which means when you're unaware of your behavior, you likely demonstrate the colors in the graph on the right. Take a look at that for a minute and just consider if that could be possible. The graph on the right is your less conscious persona. It's the more instinctive you. For most of you, it's driving home on a Friday night saying, I'm gonna be myself all weekend. That's the graph on the right. Some people lead with the same color, like my example in both graphs. Many people lead with a different color energy in their less conscious graph. And again, for most of us, for most of you, it's, it's a side of you you've never met. It's that you in the mirror that not everybody sees. Uh, my conscious and less conscious is the same. It means that what you see is what you get. When you think about showing up, you don't alter your personality as much as other people who alter it more. Now, what's important about understanding the right and left-hand graph is to take a look at the graph in the middle because the graph in the middle is the measurement of what's actually different. The higher spike that you have in the middle graph is the color energy that you are trying to show the hardest. Think about that for a minute. In my example, this person leads with high yellow. 
It looks like they're trying to spike their cool blue, which literally means when they think about showing up, they are trying to demonstrate higher blue energy, which means they're trying to be more analytical, more cautious, more deliberate, more questioning, and even more formal. They're likely doing it because it's one of their lowest color energies on their right. And they believe that compensating for having such a low amount of that color helps them show up in a better way. That's the pattern that almost everyone falls into. For almost every one of you, I think we've got, I don't even know what we have, 56 of you on this call, I would bet 53 of you are spiking the color in the middle graph, which is your lowest color on the right. Just type yes in the chat if that's true. How many of you are spiking the lowest color energy in your right hand graph? You know what I like to say? I saw one no there and another one. What I like to say is blame your parents because most parents in raising us pointed out things that we weren't showing. In my example, if this person with high yellow was being parented by someone or maybe even an early manager, the message they probably heard a lot was, look, would you stop talking so much? Look, pay, pay attention, start thinking about what you're doing, slow down, have a plan. Sorry, Vivian, you might be able to pull it up on your, on your mobile phone as a quick way to access the graphs. Otherwise, feel free to hit escape, shrink the uh, zoom, and you should be able to gain access to it. But it's interesting to think about us spiking that one color because guess what? Here's, here's a big aha for people. The only reason you'd spike a color energy if you're with someone is because they lead with that color. If someone that you're with, if these are your graphs and they lead with blue energy, the right thing to do would, would try to bring more detail, would try to take emotion off the table, would try to be more analytical, analytical would support what you're doing with data. Stretching your blue for someone who leads with blue is the ultimate goal of this whole model. But if these are your graphs and you're with someone like me who leads with yellow energy, be yourself. I don't want the cool blue energy from you and you shouldn't be trying to bring it. What this represents is the idea that we all wake up and we go to the same place every morning in consciousness. We paint the same tiger every day because it's become a habit. We need to break that habit. One of the ways that we recommend you break that habit is look in the mirror and think about, are you operating out of conscious or not? Um, I don't have one right in front of me here, but we like to use a dry erase marker as a tool that we give out in our training programs so that you can jot a note in your bathroom mirror. And the idea of the message you send to yourself is, I'll see the uniqueness of other people. I'll lean into other people's style today. I'll notice when I'm operating with consciousness. A question from uh, Sangeeta here, I wonder if it's because we wanna be accepted or liked. It could be that, it could be that. Maybe someone spiking yellow has found that that's a, a way that serves them to connect better with other people. But for a lot of us, it's not because we go there with awareness, it's because it's become a habit and we go there all the time. The only way to be able to spike what you want to spike on purpose is to learn what it feels like to go back to the less conscious graph on the right. And I already told you how to do it. You do it every day after work and you really do it on Friday. You jump in the car, you exhale, you relax and you let it go. You literally say to yourself, oh, time to be myself all weekend. That's letting go of the middle graph that's dropping all the spikes to zero and allowing yourself to be your most instinctive, less conscious self. And you stay that way until Sunday afternoon and then you probably spike the same pattern. Instead of spiking the same pattern, Sunday afternoon, remind yourself you're not at work. If you're not interacting with someone else, stay in less conscious. Just continue to relax, take a breath and let it go. Even wake, waking up Monday morning, no need to spike colors looking in the mirror. No need to paint your tiger in the mirror. Imagine waking up every day and painting a tiger as your image of who you believe you are and then walking into an office full of kittens. You're literally doing everything wrong. Walk into your office and make a decision about everybody. And that decision is what color energy do they lead with? If you're walking into your remote office and you're about to make your first phone call, it's still the same. 
what color energy am I about to connect with? If you're about to send an email, which color energy am I emailing? Because it will color, it will change how you speak, it will change whom you call, it will change if you invite someone to a video call or not. Yellow energy loves video calls, cool blue tends not to. Fiery red might be okay with it, but, it, but it's not about chatting, right? It's about getting stuff done. Earth green, you have to know the person before they're comfortable connecting with you via Zoom. All the decisions you make about not just what you're communicating with other people, but how. And Andrew, you're right. It is all a form of diplomacy. It is all about making connections with other people. Because we know that the way to be the most effective is to talk to people in their preferred style. And the way it would show up in this middle graph is if I lead with yellow, you'd spike your yellow when you're with me. It's not that hard to do. How do you spike yellow energy? You smile more and you bring some energy and enthusiasm to the conversation just a little bit more. If you identify cool blue, you take emotion off the table, get serious, be prepared, be ready. Back up what you say with data. If it's earth green, you slow down and you make a connection. But if it's fiery red, you speed up, you get to the point and you get stuff done. Some of you have spikes going down in the middle graph, by the way, that simply means that you're using less of the energy that you naturally have because you don't think you need as much. But again, the goal with practice is to learn how to bring your right hand, less conscious persona into work, into your remote office. And as soon as you realize you've got to get something done that involves someone else, you ask yourself, what color energy? As you get better, you say, what are their top two? I've told you, and I'm showing you, <laughs> showing you, I lead with yellow red. That's why I can't remember this is opposite. Let's have fun, get it done. I like to engage, I like to connect, but I wanna move right to task and accomplish things as a result. That's how I would like to be treated. If, if I led with yellow green, it wouldn't be have fun, get it done. It would be have fun, make a connection. So even that second color energy can be an important tool in understanding the best way to connect with and adapt with others that you're working with. So one last thing on the middle graph, and by the way, if you do have a printed copy, even if you don't make a note to this effect, print it and then write this in your profile, I wanna give you three labels. Label the graph on the left, conscious persona as it is now, label it game face. It's the game face that you choose to put on to show up and do the work that you do. Label the graph on the far right with the word pajamas. That's you hanging out on a Saturday morning with nothing to do. You're not putting on a game face for anyone. You're being your most instinctive, shoes off, natural self. Both graphs are you. It's simply a matter of, are you thinking about how you're showing up or not? Label the middle graph, preference flow, Label that with the word effort, because we measure the effort you make to put on your game face. And for some people it's higher, for some people it's lower. It's the number underneath the middle graph. In my example, it's 6.2, that's not very high. The range is not zero to 100, however, it's negative 66.7 to positive 66.7. And as you can see, most people come in around 35%. Most people stretch themselves to put on their game face and show up and do what they do. I've worked with people at 66.7 who are thrilled about how they show up and thrilled about how they feel. And I've worked with people at 20% that feel stress, tension, and anxiety because of how far they feel they're stretching to bring their conscious persona to work. There's no good or bad place to be on the scale, but there is a good or bad feeling that you have based on what your number is. It's how you feel Sunday afternoon when you realize you're gearing up to be ready to put your game face on. Um, slightly different levels, I would say, uh, Tyler, look back at the middle graph. If, if you've got all arrows going up, you're bringing a little more of everything. I would say that doesn't help you be a better communicator with people. Instead, I would say focus on one of the four colors and spike that one color. Literally picture the graphs when you're with someone and make a decision. Ask yourself, introvert, extrovert, oh, they're smiling, they're talking, extrovert, they're smiling. Feeler, yellow, hey, how you doing? That would be the goal. If red is a huge spike in your middle graph, Tyler, it might mean it's a lower energy on the right. 
you would be right to spike it if you're with someone who leads with red, like my wife and business partner. My wife, Linda, leads with red, yellow. She's get it done and then celebrate, which is different than me, have fun, get it done. But we're similar. Where we're different in her world is if we don't get it done, nobody celebrates nothing. That's the difference between yellow, red, and red, yellow. Is it a lower percentage for preference flow and indicator of stress? Actually, for some people, the higher the number, the more stress they might feel. But others with a higher number might feel thrill and excitement. You know, it's just waking up and thinking about work. You either wake up and say, oh, I got to get ready for work today. What's on my plate today? What's my schedule? I'm feeling tension and stress to get ready. And maybe it's a healthy stress. But other people wake up and say, yeah, I'm fired up for today. What am I going to do? The higher the number, the more you feel. Let me take you from the bar graphs, which is really all about you, to the, to the team wheel, we call it, which is all about how we work with teams. And again, we're not an intact team. If you were, this is where we'd spend much more time. Our company webinars, by the way, this is one hour. It's an overview. Our company webinars are typically two hours because we have a chance to do and interact much more with each other. There's a lot more for teams that are working together to share. But most of you have what looks like two dots. We call it wheel positions. The dimly colored dot is your right-hand graph. The bright dot is your left-hand graph. Many of you also have what looks like one dot. If your graphs are similar, your dots sit on top of each other and it looks like one. You can see over on the right, it says, if you see one dot, your conscious and less conscious dots are on top of each other. To the question that came up earlier, you, are, you don't change as much when you move to consciousness. So when I talk about your wheel position, it's the one you have or it's the bright one if you have two. What you notice about the wheel in terms of how it's made up is it's the original four colors, but with the addition back of sensing and intuition, we now move to eight unique types. And it's okay to describe yourself as one of those eight types because there's much more information in knowing someone's a director versus saying someone is a red guy or a red girl. So you can see that there's the original four colors, but then there's a blend of all the original four reformer, coordinator, helper, and motivator. You can start to see it gets more descriptive here. There's also three rings. So we move from four colors to eight types to 72 unique wheel positions. And every one of these is a person that shows up in a slightly different way. Let me go back to the original four colors, director, observer, supporter, and inspirer. Whatever your top color is, your bottom color is the opposite. Young called you rational types. If you're a director, your highest is red, your lowest is green, you really show red energy. Inspires really show yellow, supporters really show green, and observers really show cool blue. The blended colors are when your top and bottom colors are not opposite. So behind me, you can see I lead with yellow. My lowest is cool blue. That makes me an inspirer. It means that I'm likely good at inspiring others, but also that I enjoy inspiring others. That's what the descriptors mean. Motivators like to motivate others to action. I like to inspire others. Helpers help others, support others. Coordinators begin to move into this area of managing details exceptionally well. Coordinators are all about project management and organization. Observers love to take in data and solve problems. Right? Strongly, we see that in IT and finance and legal because it's about taking in information and solving problems. Reformers are a lot of military officers and surgeons that I work with. And by the way, you can do any job from anywhere, but a lot of reformers like to go into the military or like to go into medicine. Directors, not a job title, directing self, directing the action of others. Do this for me. Let's just have a gauge of where we're at in the group. Type the label in which your dot or dots fall into the, into the chat. What are we dealing with here in the call? See if you notice any patterns. While you're doing that, you can pick up on the idea. In the outermost ring, it simply means you have one color energy above your midpoint and the other three colors are below. We call you focused because we only see people out here in that outer ring 3% of the time. Another reason we don't use one color to describe people. If you move to the middle ring, we call it classic because that's where most people fall. That's where I fall. I like to rely on my yellow and my red energy along with 54% of the population. 
If you have three colors above the midpoint, you fall in the inner ring, we call it accommodating, you're there with 43% of the population. If in fact you fall on the gray spokes, your top two colors happen to be opposite. Some of the rules of thumb don't quite apply because there's a unique and creative way in which you move throughout the way you use the color energies. The idea is you can move anywhere on these gray spokes. If you lead with two opposite colors, your less conscious graph is the other two colors, um, opening up the door for you to demonstrate comfortably all four color energies. Our founder wrote a paper about the creative types. If you fall in that pattern at the end, send me an email and I'll send you some more information about where you fall. Every time we work with a team, of course, we show the team wheel and it gives you an instant look at the culture. Now, we're not one company on this call, obviously, but we all are, are part of MTA. So probably all strongly focused on technology within our organizations. What does our team wheel look like? We did put one together for everyone on the call. So for everyone on the call, what you see is there are more introverts, more people leading with blue and green energy by far than extroversion. And actually only three color energies, only three people lead with fiery red. The lighter dot, Sangeeta, uh, uh, represents your uh, less conscious right-hand graph and the bright dot represents your conscious graph. So in the type of group that we have today, not many people lead with red energy, which isn't good or bad, simply the way it is. I've worked with architects and engineers that had no one on the whole team of 60 people who led with yellow and only one person led with red energy. It is your culture, it is your team. But what you realize is, it's not so important where you are in this model, it's how well you stretch into the color energies of other people. That's the piece that matters more. How well do you stretch to the color energy of your colleagues and your coworker? Let me show you how easy that is to do. How can you recognize color energies in everyone else, even if they've never been through discovery and even if they're not demonstrating the tools that we use? Some of the other tools, right, are, are uh, let's do it this way, a mouse pad that you keep on your desk so that when you're sending an email to someone before you click, you think about how they show up. We've even got stickers that people put on the back of their phones so people can see your style and you can think about your style everywhere you go. We provide tools and job aids to help you figure it out. All the things that come when we work with intact teams like I am this afternoon. Read this slide, because I want you to see how easy it is to do this. Literally, if we can pick up on color energies, riding the elevator, doesn't it make sense we could see it everywhere? How much eye contact does someone make? How much emotion do they show you? And it's not just face-to-face. -face. Obviously, we're all face-to-face, -face, much, much less. But every email that you send and receive is full of color energy. Lots of detail, no emotion, cool blue, right back, lots of detail. It's very different than an email that's full of energy and enthusiasm and exclamation points and emoticons and even a PS. That's sunshine yellow. Write back something in sunshine yellow, but better yet, pick up the phone and call. People who lead with yellow wanna talk to you. And you know what kind of call? Zoom call. They wanna see your face. Give them what they want to help you get what you want. If you get an email that's calm and caring and connected, Write back an email that's calm and caring and connected. It's earth green. If you're one of the three on the call who lead with fiery red, you might catch yourself sending emails like this. And by the way, this is okay sending to red energy. This is not okay sending to earth green. Think about it. Think about your voicemail message. And most importantly, think about the voicemail messages you're leaving for coworkers. It's a gift when you get someone's voicemail because you hear who they are. This is Scott, leave a message. Fiery red, leave bullet points. This is Scott, sorry I missed your call. Leave a message and I'll get back in touch with you. Energy, enthusiasm, inflection in my voice. Set a, schedule a Zoom call with me. This is Scott and I'm so sorry that I missed your call. It's very important to me. 
Earth Green. Make a connection with Earth Green. And we know what cool blue sounds like. Many of you probably have a voicemail that sounds like this. Today is December 6th. I'll be in a meeting from 9 until 10 p.m. Returning calls afterwards. Please leave your full name, purpose of your call, phone number, email address, height, weight, eye color, blood type. Cool Blue Energy is always trying to capture all the data, but they don't want a voicemail from you. They want an email from you. Put it in writing, put it in writing, put it in writing. I love Zoom because we're able to see each other even when we're not together. Look for how much emotion someone shows you. And if you're not seeing emotion, right? Top of the wheel. If you're seeing emotion, bottom of the wheel. If they seem very quiet throughout the call, blue or green. If they can't stop talking, yellow and red. If it's all about work, red. If it's all about fun, sunshine yellow. There's so many opportunities to figure out color energies because we do all this for one reason. It's the last piece. It's the absolute execution of this model is you use it on everyone else starting in two minutes, literally. And it's not that difficult to do. How do we adapt ourselves to connect with the four color energies? We've got to identify them first, and then it literally is this easy. Speed up for fiery red, slow down for earth green. Have fun, bring energy and enthusiasm for sunshine yellow, and get serious, put it in writing for cool blue. Take a screenshot of this. Take a screenshot of this. I believe this is the most important slide that I'm sharing with you because this is what you should post in front of your workstation, wherever you are. And whether you're calling, emailing, on Zoom, talking to someone as you walk into your kitchen, or raising your children, this should be what you're thinking about. Which color energy am I leaning into? Do they want an email? Do they want a call? Do they want a Zoom call? Do they want face-to-face? -face? Do they want lots of detail or no detail? Do they want a chit-chat or not? A rule of thumb on email is if someone sends you a greeting, send a greeting back. If someone sends no greeting to you, don't send them a greeting back. Guess what? They don't want one or they would have sent you one. It's all about leaning into the unique style of other people. Let me wrap this up for you. Again, we use the blocks as a metaphor, but it's a metaphor of how you show up. The blocks are all about who are you? What are your colors? Who are they? What's the one color you pick up on that that person leads with? Step three, I just shared it with you. Speed up, slow down, have fun, get serious. Which of those four actions will you take? Because it should drive everything you do and your communication back with other people. As I mentioned, we're happy to email you the blocks to put in your email signature. I like to put words next to mine. This is my email. So while you see my blocks, it also says involve me and get it done. Have fun, get it done is my natural wiring. By the way, you can just change the colors in your email signature. If you've got four lines, put the four colors. You could do that right now. Think about having every color energy of everyone on the team available to you. And Curtis, I apologize, but if you, I'll give you my contact info at the end, and then that's how I know I'll just email it back to you. Would it be great to see the top two colors of everyone you work with? Of course it is. Here's a company that has a three foot poster with everybody's wheel position. And then, as I said earlier, they shared all their do's and don'ts on the left-hand side. Think about every client you work with. If you manage them in CRM, imagine a field called color energies to track them. Here's our team right here in Excelsior, Minnesota, when we're all together, because we're not together, everyone printed this and has it above their workstation so everybody can see it. I don't know if you can see it, but it's literally on the wall right there. Everyone sees it every day when they're in the office. It reminds us how everyone else wants to be treated. Here's my, I mentioned I would give you my email address. It's scott at discoveryourself.com. I wanna add two things for you as resources. I'll just, I'll add them here. That's probably simple. Uh, scottstedtalk.com is a 15 minute summary of this whole model and another one that will explain your profiles again in detail and you can take it at your own pace is discoveryexplained.com. So I'm gonna leave that up so that you can see it. Contact information for me, Scott's TED Talk is that 15 minute summary, discoveryexplained.com will take you through the profile, the wheels, the graphs, and the whole system. That's about 35 minutes. And there's some good bloopers on the end of that one too. Let me pause again, ask if there's any questions, type them into the chat. 
Also, Piper, if you're able to just open it up uh, for full video and full audio, happy to answer any questions that way as well. Yeah, I'm not sure if we can actually do that live, but I will see if I can get that going. Okay, no worries. Also, I just want to say that we have recorded this webinar, and so we will be sending out links of where you can watch the video if you want to revisit as well. Oh, dynamite. Great idea. Yeah. And if you could send that to me as well, I'd love to see it. Always well, room for improvement. <laughs> Absolutely. So, Carol, that seems like it's kind of a, um, it's a big question, but when you say limitations, uh, I, I'm going to take that to mean like where wouldn't it fit well? It's great for teams great for helping manage other people, great for helping a, a, an individual identify some of their potential gifts, potential areas for improvement. It's never intended to be a hiring tool that rules people out. Because as we always say, you can do any job from any one of the 72 wheel positions. We just see patterns, right? We see patterns. Salespeople tend to be motivators. Um, people who work in IT tend to be observers or coordinators. And uh, teachers, therapists tend to be helpers and supporters, but you can do any job from anywhere. That's what we say. It's really about not so much um, spending all of your time on your graphs anymore. It's much more about, can you meet me? Can you get an email from me? Can you, are you about to leave a voicemail for me? And can you connect me to the language of color? If you can, you'll do all the right things. If there's no more questions, just, uh, Go ahead, feel free to drop off the call. Piper will follow up with the information. Thanks very much for the time. Um, again, Scott at discoveryourself.com. If this is something you might wanna bring into your own organization, please reach out to us and we'll, we're doing uh, almost one of these virtual intact teams every single day. Again, with all the tools shipped to all of your remote locations. Glad you enjoyed it, Vivian. Thank you, Michael. Thank you, everyone. Thanks everyone.